I'm stage director James Alexander, and we've just heard the opening measure of Rimsky Korsakov's Scheherazade, played by the Philadelphia Orchestra, conducted by Leopold Stokowski. Welcome to my latest blog as both the Philadelphia Orchestra and Symphony 5.0 prepare for four amazing concerts in the Academy of Music June 21 through 23. In these blogs, I'm aiming to share with you, our audience, some of my creative processes. All of the concerts this summer are based on the programming of one of the 20th century's legendary conductors, Leopold Stokowski. I'm truly grateful that here am I sitting in the 21st century, being able to access an amazing archive of footage and recordings of this extraordinary conductor and his fabulous Philadelphians. When I heard that Scheherazade was on one of the concert programmes, my research truly began to take shape. I looked into the life and work of the composer Rimsky-Korsakov, and I looked at the inspiration that he had for the piece itself, Tales of the Arabian Nights. My research continued while listening to Stokowski and his Philadelphia Orchestra. Soon, my brain began to conjure its own images. I translated these into simple napkin sketches I'm no artist, and continued to seek inspiration from historical sources. Then, bearing in mind the canvas I have to work on, in this case the orchestra shell and the magnificent interior of the Academy of Music, I allowed my mind to further fantasize while looking at the score and repeatedly listening to recordings. For these concerts, I was keen not to create a slavish narrative. After all, Rimsky-Korsakov himself simply wanted to compose a piece of music based on images that he had seen from the Arabian Nights. He was a man of his time, fascinated by what was called Orientalism. He tried capturing a taste of the exotic, and some would say erotic, nature contained within these stories. At one point, Rimsky himself even removed the restrictive narrative titles that we continue to use today. He saw them as too heavy a framework. When I read that word framework, it inspired me to think about a physical framework for our concert. Then I listened again to the opening measures. Aha, our Sultan should be visibly present. He should be overshadowing us and omnipresent throughout the work. So should Shahrazad. She should be in the auditorium with us, sitting beside us as she tells her story. The orchestra shell serves as a canvas upon which Scheherazade tells her story. The preliminary sketches or images that I envisage or gather make the transition from my mind through paper to on-screen graphics, worked by my creative designer who captures these ideas. He interprets the images I've collaborated on with him, and then we settle on a look for each background, backdrop, character or effect. He then creates computer-generated versions of what we've agreed on. This is a bit like an orchestrator transcribing or fleshing out the tunes of a composer. Finally, all of these images get collated and run together just like a film. We put them to a time frame, because after all, they have to sync with the score and more precisely, our conductor's tempos. Next step, how to project these images on a chosen surface. In this case, it's the walls in the proscenium arch of the Academy and the orchestral shell on stage. So for now, sit back and watch how some of these preliminary images have moved to artwork. And if you want to see how they move from artwork to projections, then come see the concert. Speaking of which, don't forget to vote for the music you want to hear in the Audience Choice programme on Saturday 23rd of June. Visit www.philorc.org and let Maestro and the Orchestra know what you want them to play at that concert. Thanks for stopping by. That's great. Can you just act like you're drawing some stuff? Uh.